Lord, did the trials come? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see that absolute passion to give yourself. <laughs> Guys, 12 commands. What was it? Quickly. Just for the sake of Mary. Stop. All your speaking, stop all your emotions, all your dangers, your information, as if you can give God the information that He doesn't know according to you. No. Stop. You're going to be dependent? Be silent. Secondly, you're going to be dependent? Hear what He has to say. You're going to be dependent? Bring all your thoughts that you are dependent on and all your opinions. Gather everything. That's the third. Gather, gather everything together so that fourthly, you will be dependent on Him so that you will repent. Not going your own way because you want to be dependent on God, so you turn from your own way. Repentance is then part of your life when you are dependent on Him. Fifthly, then you are in the place that you can see God. And not for your own agenda, but if you give your life and surrender your life in such a way, yes, you will seek Him. Him. Not just an answer. You will seek Him and righteousness, how to be found in Him, because He is my righteousness. Amen? Amen. Standing with that. Hallelujah. I will seek Him. That's number? Five. Number five. Number six. Wait. 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 Okay. First one is be silent. Now I'm at point number six. Now you're getting impatient. Uh-uh. Wait. As you're seeking, you wait every day. Amen. With an expectancy. Number seven. Call on Him. Now, this is really calling on Him. Amen? This is Lord. It's, it's only you. It's only you that can bring the difference. Now, at this place, asking for all these things. But from the place of security and position with Christ. Amen? That's number seven. Number eight. Serve Him. That will be true servanthood. That is not serving as a slave, as a curse. There is serving that is a curse. And there is servanthood that is an honor. Don't serve because of slavery as a curse from hell. Serve as an honor in Christ, the servant of all. There's a difference. Get these principles right and you will know the difference. Amen? That's number eight. Number nine. Don't allow any shame on your life. The past is gone. Amen? We're going to look forward. You will not be dependent on your past. You'll be dependent on Him. Amen. Amen. Because you enjoy, 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 enjoy more and more and more every day. Yes. That's number, number 10. Sing, rejoice, Sing, rejoice shout. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because you have an awesome destiny. You have an awesome dad. You have the best 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 friend that there can ever be that's your role model you're expecting him you're going to be the bride you're being purified you're not moaning groaning about all the things and whatever you're going to wear amen amen, amen. amen. so that's a command finish that's number 10 number 11 fear not a command okay You've dealt with that what is rubbish, dealt with that what is not from God, you will not fear. Even if it comes, you will walk in perfect love. As you're going to walk with Christ, you're going to walk with perfect love. There will not be intimacy with your past, intimacy with, the, with whatever comes your way, with any giant. No fear in perfect love. Amen. That's number 11. As He rejoiced over you with singing because He just loves you. He's driven by love. God is love. Amen? So He's driven by Himself. We are driven by love towards Him. He's driven by love towards us. But He is love. So He's driven by Himself towards us. Amen? That's number, number 12. All the Christians, you know. All the suffering. All the tribulation. All the things that they need to go through. And how many people you've heard out there? I don't want to become a Christian because they have a life. You must just see them. At least we can enjoy life because if you become a Christian, you must leave all these joys in life, you know, and get all the sorrows of Christianity and all the laws and all the you're not allowed to enjoy anything. Hello? 
But you run with Christ. Your dad will cheer you on. And everybody else that see your life will say, Wow! Who's the father that he is enjoying? Who's that father? Who's that father that is cheering on? Who, where does you get the zeal from? Oh, it's my dad cheering me on. We're having an awesome time together. Well, when? No, no, from now to eternity. Hello. Hello. Zephaniah calling you to be dependent because he wants you to be the slave and be dependent. No, that is the curse of dependency. Dependency is enjoyment together. Dependency is he's cheering you on. But you need him to cheer you on. You want your dad to encourage you. You want your dad to acknowledge in the sense of, yes, my son, yes, my daughter. God is cheering his son. His son is baptized. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hello. Your life is in that son. You are become a son in the Son, and God is well pleased with you. That is my son. That is God bragging about you. He will rejoice over you of singing. Amen. 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 Let that be our life. Praise the Lord. Okay, just tell the people out there to praise the Lord. Abo, Pastor Abel, let me mark you over here. As he praise the Lord and say, Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! Hallelujah! <laughs> Just get some sutu blood in you. I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> really. Sure. <laughs> we need to change and learn from one another. Okay, Zephaniah. We are still there, hey? Three. Now this is about four principles. We're nearly at the end of all the principles. Okay. First it was three situations, then it was two, 12 commands. Now we're talking about the city. And what is the state of the city that we are living in? Woe to her that is rebellious and polluted, the oppressive, the oppressing city. Now there's four things. She did not listen to and heed to the voice of God. She accepted no correction or instruction. She trusted not in the Lord. Hello? She drew not near to her God. Four things. That is wrong. Not, not listening. Okay. Be silent here. Secondly, she's not taking correction. To repent, bring your thoughts, bring your life, repent, see God. Are we there? She's not taking correction. I can hear, I can listen, but not take correction. I need to take the correction. I need to be open, I need to be teachable, not just here. They heard Christ, but they turned away from Him and still go to, went to hell. Secondly, thirdly, didn't trust in Him. And trust in Him, surrender everything to Him, wait on Him. Not doing your own thing to wait, you need some trust, level of trust. I cannot wait any longer because that is going to happen and that is going to happen. Saul, I cannot wait for Samuel, I must just bring the offering myself and he loses his destiny. Hello, are we with one another? And fourthly, fourthly, ach nie, man, iemand kan praten. Didn't draw near to God. Four facets. Then look at verse 3. Her officials in the midst of her are roaring lions. Dictators. Devouring people. Not being there for the people. What was the first thing they didn't do? They did not listen. What is authority bringing in your life? You need to listen. When your child, authority says, listen. When you stand under authority in the church, it's for you to listen. But in the end, to listen what God is saying. Amen? Amen. Authority is in the world so that we will listen. That is why there is authority. Second one. Her judges are 
evening wolves. They gnaw not the bones on the morrow, but nothing is left by the morning. Hmm. These judges are just going to fret you up. Klar. Yeah, look at the system. You pay everything for that. What are we talking about? They receive no correction. What is the judges for? What is it out there supposed to do in this nation to bring correction to that what is wrong in society? Hello? The judges are not doing their job. Because he's supposed to, receive, to bring correction, but this judges is polluted. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. The officials is not doing what they're supposed to do to tell the people, listen to what God is saying. Finish. No nonsense. Listen to what God is saying. Judges, correct your ways. This is wrong. That is wrong. Discipline on you. So that the fear of God can come. Thirdly, the prophets are light, lacking truth, gravity, and steadiness, and men of treachery. Prophets, what is supposed to happen? Encourage you to be dependent. Encourage you to be independent so that you can trust. I trust. I trust. God is saying, there, God is heading. God is going in that direction. I'm trusting Him. That's it. Prophet must bring trust more in you. The prophets must encourage you so that you can trust and trust more. Amen. Amen. See the way. You are seeing here, but see the way. Whoa. I will trust. Are you with me? Yeah. In the encouragement is trust. When you can trust the Lord, you're encouraged. When you're discouraged, trust is a, is a difficult thing. You know? You're not encouraged in your marriage because you don't trust one another. If you can truly trust one another, you are encouraged. You have people that you can truly trust. There's encouragement around you. Trust and encouragement is going together. Prophecy is for encouragement. Prophecy is so that you can understand trust. Prophecy is to serve your life so that you will trust Him. Amen. Amen. Prophets are too light. The fourth one. Her priests are profaned. They have profaned the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. Violence to the law. Priests must lead you closer to God. They didn't near God. The nation, God is bringing judgment. But it was the people, the leaders that were appointed to serve the people that were, that were wrong. They were stumbling blocks in the life of the nation, in the life of Jerusalem, in the life of that city. Now the city is like wasted. The city is. There's a woe, there's a curse on them. They are rebellious, polluted, oppressing people. Hello? Why? Leadership, officials, hello? The judges to bring correction, the prophets to bring trust in God, the priests to bring the people closer to God, they are all wasted, not doing their job. And the curse is on the land. This is what God is saying. These people are not dependent on Him. This leadership, they are not dependent. These judges, they are according to what they think is right. They do, not dependent on him. These prophets, not dependent on him, but according to what they believe is in the future that they, they talk. These priests, not dependent on him, drawing the people closer, but drawing the people to themselves. There's no dependency. There's a curse of religion. But no dependency that brings joy. Joy in the offering, joy in the commitment, joy from your father to you, you towards your father, as you brag about one another, and you do everything together, and you hear your father rejoicing of you with singing. God help us that we will repent. Amen. 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 End of with Zephaniah 3, verse 19 and 20. Behold, at that time I will deal with those who afflicted you, I will save the limping ones and gather the outcasts and will make them a praise and a name in every land of their shame. God will save you. He will gather you 
and he will make you a praise and a name in every land. He will make you a name. What is that? He will make you a praise. He will brag about you. That's the only way that you will have a name or any praise. Is when the, the God of this universe brings praise to you. When He honors you. When He gives you a name. Otherwise you have nothing. There is no praise about you. There is no name about you. If it's not from God Himself. This is your dad bragging about you. Amen? Amen. He will save you. He will gather you and He will make you a name. Not a name in the name of pride. An arrogance that will bring destruction. But come with dependency, there will be a name. He will give you a name. Hallelujah. He will give you a statue, He will give you a name. Hallelujah. Verse 20. The same. At that time, I will bring you in. Yes, at that time, first of all, I will bring you in. I will save you. Same context. Second one, once again, I will gather you. For I will make you the same as the previous verse. I think God is emphasizing this. He's repeating the same thing. I will make you a name and a praise among all the nations of the earth. When I reverse your captivity before your eyes. You will not fight for your captivity for you to be free. God will just do it. You live these principles. You become dependent on Him. You give, give yourself to Him. He will show you who He is so that you can brag about Him. So that you can brag and say, You know, it was the only God. He changed everything in my life. What did He say? I'll reverse your captivity before your own eyes. I cannot believe it, what I saw before my eyes, what God did. You will brag about Him. He will make you a name on this earth and among the nations. Among the nations, yes. He will make you a praise and be, there will be a name over you. That will be the name of Christ. You will be identified with Him. Even the name Christian is supposed to be linked with Christ. Hello? But what happened to that name? There's no principles that were followed in a place of dependency on Christ. Dependency on God and God alone. Therefore the rejoicing is not there. The boasting is not there in Christ. He's not boasting with you. He's not bragging about you. You're not bragging about Him. Nobody sees that. What an awesome picture. When a son is there and he's just bragging about his dad. And the dad is there and he's bragging about his son. Your life is in the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father, God the Father, is bragging about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Your life is hidden in Him. The Son is bragging about the Father. There's this intimate intimacy in the Trinity. And that is the wonder of Father and Son. How it's supposed to be. And in Christ you are walking with the Father. If you understand how to be in Christ based on dependency on Him. Dependency. Dependency is the key word with Zephaniah. To be dependent on God. Be dependent on God. Deal with the rubbish. Let the flesh be burnt away. Hello? Don't fear that. Your life will be hidden. Your life will be hidden if you are found in Christ. Amen? Amen. And all the rest will burn up. And then you will see. The Lord my God is with me. He's mighty to save. I saw His might in how He saved me. He takes great delight in Him. I just see how He delights in me. It's amazing. He doesn't condemn me. He, yes, I deal with the things. I repent. And when I come to He says, shh, no mention of anything in the past. Today is about today. What are we going to do today? Let's enjoy today together. Let's live together and enjoy one another. For that reason He created you, so that He can enjoy you. And He wants you to enjoy Him. What Father is there? Where the Son says, Dad, I will choose to praise you. My life is in you, Lord. When are they singing a new song? In you, it's in you. Is that a son rejoicing in his dad? Is that a son bragging about his dad? Become that son. Work these principles in your life. Allow prophetic challenge in your life. Work through this book, Zephaniah. So that you can get into that place. That you understand how He rejoices over you of singing. And if God is rejoicing over you of singing, how much more will you rejoice over Him of singing? 
Thank you, Father, that we can just be in your presence. God, forgive us for so many things, so many things that is not from you. Forgive us for not walking dependent on you, Lord. We choose to turn our, our, in our ways, Lord. Here we are, Lord. We want to be silent before you. We want to be silent before you. You have a lot of voices in your head, and that voices need to be silent. There's too much at this moment. Yes, all of us are repenting from this one, but there's a specific lot of voices in you, and you need a breakthrough now. You need to unite that breakthrough so that that voices will just be quiet. Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. God, I pray for each one of them to have the breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. That voices will be still, be still in Jesus' name. The voice of fear, intimidation, stress, whatever, budgets, giants. It will be still, be still in Jesus' name. Be still in Jesus' name. You will have nothing to say. You will have nothing to say. Arrest their minds. Arrest their minds in your peace, Lord, that they will become still. Become still, that their hearts and their minds will be arrested, protected by peace, so that they can become still before you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for that breakthrough, so that, uh, as a second point, they can hear what you have to say, Lord. Not hear their circumstances, not hear their reasoning, but that they will hear that what you have for them. We trust you for that, Father, that we will get into that place. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. You are sitting here and you need to collect your thoughts. You need to repent. There's a lot of things all over the place. You have a lot of strategies, but you need to repent. It's you. Just raise your hand. Collect the thoughts. Repent from that what you know that is not from Him. God, I pray for everyone who needs that breakthrough. I pray that they will understand how to bring everything on the table so that you can give the input, so that you can bring the correction, Lord. That they will receive that correction that is from you so that they can in purity seek you. Seek you. Seek you, you, you. Not just an answer, Lord. That they will seek you to be found in you as their righteousness, Lord. To stand with stature above all other things. That they will seek you with a focus on you. A focus on you and on you alone, Lord. So that they will earnestly have an expectancy to wait upon you. To wait upon you. We trust you for that, Father, as they call upon you and will serve you with purity. Serve you with purity. We trust you for that, Father. We trust you for that in Jesus' name. You sit here and there's shame on your life. There's certain things that you feel ashamed of. And you need to finally forgive yourself. Forgive that person, that people, and you need to forgive yourself. And there's no shame anymore that that you just will see the blood of Christ behind you and your past is gone. You need to have that breakthrough from that shame. Just lift your hand. God, I pray that, you will, that the blood of Christ will have the final say in their lives. That the power of the blood will have the final say. We break the power of shame in the name of Jesus Christ. That they will understand their worth. How they are awesome treasure in your hands. Bought by the price, the blood of Christ. Therefore, there will be no shame, no shame. No sin is greater than the offering on the cross. As they honor the offering on the cross, Lord. Honor the blood of Christ and not honor the sin. Thank you for the breakthrough, Father, that they hear tonight. I have forgiven you. That, Father, you are saying, I have forgiven you. I have forgiven you. Take your forgiveness. God, forgive us. Forgive them. For not taking forgiveness. For not taking the precious gift of forgiveness that you have given them and us, Lord. We take it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we take that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to sing one song, and that is our repentance uh, <clears throat> with number nine. Sing, shout, rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because we fear not what people will think about you. Hello? Next to you, at least. You will be totally in love with Christ. And people will see that Jesus for spot for life of Jesus. They will see that out there. You will fear not. You will not be slow. Slap under. Clap that slap under and say, Gaan in Jesus' name. Okay, everybody. You're excited. Amen. Great. Hallelujah.